you got the show and you got the book. Listen, uh, it's always great to see you, but one thing I've known about you over the, the years that we've been doing the interviews is you identify a need and try to address it. So it could be something as simple as, you know, initially showing people about contractors and then adding layers to it. And then, now we're going to work this. Now we're going to work in a bigger community project. So, so what was the need you saw that made you think a manual was the way to go? You know, well, for years now, everybody's asking the question. I stop to pump gas. I'm in the store. Hey, can I get a picture? Oh, like I, I got a problem with my house. Yeah. So You're like this, a doctor, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, what's this? Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm a lawyer. You yeah. know, let me. Yeah, I'll handle your case. You've heard all these sayings, but everyone stops me at the airport. Can I ask you a question? And it just seemed to make sense that after been being the fifth book, it's like, okay, let's do a, a manual that says, I got a problem with my roof. Why is my basement molding? I'm flooding. What are the signs? And this way, instead of reading the whole book, like a lot of people seem to not want to do anymore, they want an answer now, yeah. right? They go to the internet, they want that answer. And I think that this is just the opportunity for them. It's like, I have an ice dam. Boom, go to ice dams, find out everything about it, the products you should right. be using, and everything that I recommend to do it. So it answers your question. Yeah, it's essentially like the joy of cooking. I was thinking uh, when I was looking at the book that every home needs, there are a couple of areas you're going to have to deal with all the time and need an easy to grab manual to get me going. How do I do this? How do I do that? And it's a good first step. So, so when, how do you then identify what goes into this book? Because there are bazillions of questions that homeowners have. You know, really how this worked is I'm in my truck, I've got the recorder in my ear, I'm driving because I drive an awful lot from job site to job site, and I just talk into the recorder. So I'll cover the roof and everything I can think of, right from shingles right down, breathing, all the theories that are necessary, then I'll move myself down to the kitchen, I'll hit everything. You know, when we first started talking about it, a lot of this came from the lessons you learned from your dad and how you wanted to make things right, ultimately, and have this show make it right. Does the motivation change, though, over 10 years? No, 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 that's what this is about. Again, I don't care about TV, I really don't. I, I don't think you do, it's just what you do, okay. right? It's like, it doesn't matter. You probably want a vacation as bad as I do. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Oh, I'm taking one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I really can't. You have to take well, one. Okay, I'm the boss, yes. right? I'm the president, I'm everything. So it's like, what am I going to phone myself and go, hey, dude, I need a break. Yeah. It's like, because I'm not going to listen, Right. so that's not going to work. No, but at some point you have to recognize, and I'm, okay, let's have a moment here. At some point you have to recognize you're working a lot, man, and then, is it the... Are you getting the most out of the life you can get if you do similar things over and over again? Certain things I think it takes to hit you and, and, and make you understand that. I'm at my daughter's house the other, the other day and I'm, I'm looking at my grandkids, right? I haven't seen them in so long, it's like I'm coming to see them. And I realized I was there about an hour and a half and I paid a lot of attention to Emily and to Wyatt. And I realized, you know, I, I gotta go, I gotta go. But, you know, after I left, I thought, well, why did I have to leave? Like, why am I always running? Why am I not seizing the moment? And it kind of clicked into my head after that that I think I'm moving too fast in life. Like, days are going by very quickly. So I'm, I'm trying to tell myself, slow down, smell the roses, enjoy the people around you. And if anything, smile. Well, the one thing you do have, you have lots going for you, but in this case you're dealing with people's lives and helping people in a very practical way with something that's very important to them so in a sense you're having many moments of humanity every day aren't you uh yeah yeah, yeah. that's a definite and and i guess reminders it's no matter how we looked i would turn 50 i was like 50 i thought how was 20 yesterday you, you're laying out the perfect plan right now now you've got you've got your kids all involved in your project and they are the leg the home's legacy I suppose that's intentional. <laughs> well, no, I, I gotta tell you, at first, I didn't really wanna put my kids on television because I, I knew what it did to me, right? I really felt what it did to me in the yeah, right there. Okay, okay. And I didn't want to, uh, because I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything, and if anything, it changes your life. You know what it's like. You'll, you'll pick a couple of restaurants that you get to hide in the back. Mm -hmm. It's not that you wanna be away from people. I think it's just that I wanna be away from everything yeah. once in a while. So. When I saw how good they were on television and how good they, just natural, like these kids are freaking natural, I thought, you know what? All right, it's done now. People are starting to recognize them. I want to do their own show. Yeah. So Holmes, the next generation, we Mike and Sherry, and then five more crew members. It's going to be a really slick show. And, and are the other crew members uh, same age as them or, age, or more like us? Young age. Yeah. So everyone's young. It's, it's going to be like Glee, construction, <laughs> only... Only, yeah. Which one is going to sing? <laughs> They're not singing. It's about them. It's not yeah. about homeowners. Right. It's not about homeowners anymore. It's about them. But that's, that, that's a shift, though. It's a yeah. shift, right? Even in your, in your brand or your business, because it often is about the home and the homeowners. 
Yeah, and I, I think we've done enough, and I think after, geez, what is this, almost 13 years of me filming, uh, I think we've done enough of that when it comes to this style. You know, I want to go into uh, different shows that I'm going to, if you want, I'll talk about. Yeah. But for them, I see it in a different key. I think it's got to be about them, their lives, how they can make money doing it, being honest about it, uh, and focusing on the crew. If they go play pool, let's get in and go see them playing pool and what they do on the side. Well, so much of your success is based on your upbringing and, 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 and the neighborhood you grew up in, the things you saw, and the things that made you the adult that you are today. They have a very different upbringing than you did. So it will definitely go in its own direction, and it won't be like the Mike Holmes that people have come to know, right? No, it'll be them. Yeah. It'll be them. Because that's, that's probably going to be great for you. It's, you have a different kind of worry, then. It's your kids. Well, I mean, you have kids, you worry. You, you, you always worry when you have kids. But no, I don't worry about these guys. I mean, they're, they're really good kids. They you know how to say thank you. They know how to open the door for you. I mean, yeah. they're, they're courteous. They're kind. They're, they've got the biggest hearts, probably from Dad. Uh, so I, I don't worry about them. <laughs> Let's get the camera back on them. Is that accurate? <laughs> From Dad? I mean, he is right here after all. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, brimming with pride. I mean, the older you get, the more emotional one gets. Do you find yourself becoming more emotional watching your kids grow? Yeah, it... just recently I've noticed that. Again, you know, going to see my, my grandkids and seeing my, not seeing my kids enough. I see them at work, but not seeing them enough after work. We just recently, I guess about 40 of us went down to Costa Rica. Carlito got married, one of the guys on the show. And, yeah. I love that guy. So we shut down, literally, the company, and we flew down to support Carlito. And one of the things that was really big for me was watching everyone down there having fun. And that put a big smile on my face that my family and my real family are together having a great time. I really, absolutely enjoyed that. It's a great place to be for you. Yeah. So, but I know your brain's working. What's the next show? There's one that I'm toying with, uh, Carmen Electra called The Office, and it was funny because it got to me through... You too? Yeah, <laughs> she called you. No, she did not. Look, Carmen Electra called The Office, okay. And what did she say? Hey, Mike. Well, she wants me to fix her house. Right. So the vice president, one of my vice presidents, calls me and says, you know, I just thought I'd let you know that this, she called, and we're going to humbly decline, you know, we can't do it. And I said, wait a second, wait a second. I got... <laughs> Wait, it's not about that she's gorgeous, but that's nice. Yeah. It's, it's about, I thought, whole, and it clicked, boom, Celebrity Homes. Yeah. And I thought, wow, there's a new opportunity. Another show that's never been done. Why don't I go around the planet and help celebrities? Right. So people get to, they all want to know what they're like behind the, you know, the screen, what they're behind right. the camera. Right. They want to know what they're like, and maybe I can bring that out of them. Yeah, and the truth is most celebrities aren't as rich as people think, so their homes have problems. Oh, like, I'm sure. Most of celebrities it. have jobs because they need the job. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Right? How about the Prime Minister's home? Yeah, the Prime Minister's home, 24 Sussex. I was once told by a former Prime Minister that the draft will cut you in half. And the asbestos will carry you away. It's like really? that, that house is in trouble. <laughs> and it's in big Let, trouble. Forget Carmen Electro. Let's yes. do that. <laughs> Fixing the, I, dude, I will give me a tool belt and a hammer. I'm there. And do you know if me, I did his house yeah. and the opposition's leader across yeah. the street, if I did that, I'd probably save the taxpayers millions. Sussex and Stornoway. Which millions house is better? Of, I would talk about the history of the prime ministers that are there. You know, I'd like to keep it real, and I think that's an opportunity, too. Let's not tell them, because they'll probably phone me and go, dude. No, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, man. That would be so Canadian if Prime Minister Harper calls you and says, listen, I'll give you tickets to see the Calgary Flames if you fix my house. You know? <laughs> It's, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it could be done. Might have to do a little more than that. It's, a, it's funny how, how, how life changes for you, right? And your life could have been completely different. I want to read something here for you, which I think is kind of cute. This year's school play was based on Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist, adapted by Miss Brown and produced by Miss Piercy, or Mr. Piercy. This, you were in Oliver Twist, weren't you? I was Dodger. In, with 83? Yes, yeah. I was a little kid, and I had to sing six songs solo. I had to be on stage and be Dodger, the Hence artful your, Dodger. your glee fascination. That makes sense now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a singer, man. I mean, it just, it happened. It was the teacher said, you got to be Dodger. And I said, I don't think I can do that. He goes, you can do it. And I, you know, these two teachers, Miss Brown and Mr. Piercy, yeah. you, you remember the names of the good teachers. The other teachers, like, I, don't, I know what they look like. I haven't got a clue who they are. Well, take a look at this. Oh, you have something. Hi, George and Mike. Oh, you do? My name is Brian Piercy, and I taught Mike at Queen Alexandra School when he was 13. He played the Artful Dodger in our production of Oliver. Mm -hmm. Mike, you jokingly once said that that was your start in showbiz. Now, you did sing the song, I'd Do Anything, 
Well, you've done a lot more than anything. Do you think that experience gave you confidence in yourself? Interesting. Uh, interesting. That was Mr. Piercy. Uh, Mr. It was the music teacher. Right. Do I think that it gave me confidence in myself? Well, I think, you know, what I always had confidence in, there's a fine line between confidence and cocky. Yeah. And you're going to have half the people say, oh, he's a cocky, you know, SOB. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm a confident guy. You know, I, I know what I want to do. I know where I'm going to go. And I open the doors in the direction I want to go. I'm the driver of the car. Right. And that's the way I am in life. Did it help give me confidence? Were you like that when you were 11, though? No. No, no, I was, I was a real quiet kid. I never swore, never did anything like that. I was, as a matter of fact, I got picked on even by the girls at school, really? which was terrible. <laughs> Took around more of my time than after this. Thank you, All right, coming up, the one thing that is guaranteed to make Mike cry, aside from, you know, knob and tube wiring, that is. time together I've gotten to know you quite well yet there's one thing over all the years of working together that has really kind of weighed hard on my mind and I, I've been you know wanting to ask you this but I wasn't sure how to ask you and I figure this would be better time than any I really really want to know how many pairs of overalls do you own <laughs> I just can't figure it out. I mean, I've been counting, but uh, God, you got me on this one. <laughs> I knew he was going to ask yeah, something funny. Uh, 42. 42? Yeah. Do you have a special storage facility that you built for them? I or? actually did. Yeah. I, I built a, an office in my shop, not my new garage, which right. you see my new garage. Uh, I built an office in my shop. It's a total walk-in closet, and it's all my work clothes. That's amazing. That's a, that's a walk-in closet for your man cave. Okay, Time, that inspired who wore it best. You ready? First up, Mike Holmes or Tupac Shakur? Overalls. Who wore them best? Oh, me. You wore them best. <laughs> me. <laughs> Definitely me. Definitely. <laughs> and Justin Bieber, anthropology time. What's the one thing you never want to find in your basement? Uh, mold. What's the one thing you never want to find in your bedroom? Hmm. <laughs> uh, rats. Rats. Of all the things you could have said, Mike, rats. Um, <laughs> what are you sick and tired of hearing people complain about? Life. I personally can't watch Homeward Bound without shedding a tear. What's the one movie that is certain to make you cry? I'm telling you, these love stories are killing me lately. Yeah. I, was, I was on a plane watching this movie, and it was about the family. The daughter was dying. And I'm telling you, I just started crying. On the plane, I'm like, <laughs> everyone's going to see me cry. You know, big, tough Mike. And I was yeah. like, whoa, did that hit me. I just didn't expect it. So did you stay to Don't the end? Don't tell anyone. No, 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 no one. Did you stay to the end of the movie? I did. Three words that describe you on the job. Three words. Mm -hmm. mm. Passionate, strong, uh, attention. Three words that describe you on your boat. Relaxed, <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> smiling. <laughs> if you're uh, watching the, uh, the Coast Guard right now, listen, just be very aware. It's only when the boat is docked. It's tied off. It's tied <laughs> off. That's what he's doing. Um, Mike Holmes, everybody. The Holmes Manual. Buy it, put it on yourself. What a pleasure, man. Thanks,